in today's show. It's a 12-team, nine-category mock draft. We're a week before the NBA season. It's a big one. Let's go, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Now, it's been it's been a while since I've done a 12-team snake nine-category league draft. We did one very early on in the process. Stuff has changed. We're going to do another one now. I don't think we're going to sneak one more in before the start of the season, but we will see. Um, But here we are, 12 team, nine cat. I am picking at number five, and I'm going to be joined in this draft by Alex Reclean of Rotowire. He's going to be picking at number two. We're going to talk through this draft and see how it all goes. But as I always do with these mock draft shows, I don't want to interrupt the flow of the draft. So let's talk about Sleeper, who is sponsoring today's show. If you are looking for a way to start a new fantasy basketball. Sleeper has been around for football for a while. Now they're doing fantasy basketball. They offer points only as their only format they offer. They also only offer game pick, but game pick, what it is, it means you just pick one game per week for each player. So if you're coming across from a fantasy football background or you're looking to start a league with new players for fantasy basketball, this is very similar to fantasy football and it's an easy way to get them involved. So Get your friends from school, get your friends from work, get everyone together and start a new league on Sleeper. Their draft room, incredibly easy to use, really, really looks good. Great chat functions as well. So start a league, use Sleeper's game pick format and get in, get into some fantasy basketball for the upcoming season. Football is back and the number one place to place all of your football action is, whether it's pro or college football, it is Bet Online. Footballs, there have been some great games this season. Another good one coming up today. Um, and with a new updated site and interface, there's more odds, more props, more contests. Bet Online is the number one source for everything football this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up using our promo code Locked On for a 50% welcome bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, or even to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online has everything you could possibly in to take advantage of all their great offers for the upcoming season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. So let's go and bring Alex in. I have a bit of a chat before we start this draft, and then we're ready to get in and make some draft picks. All right, so we're a couple of minutes away from this draft starting. So let's welcome in. The man who's drafting with me. He's picking at number two in this draft. Alex Reclean is back. Alex, welcome back. Thanks for having me. All right, so you're picking at number two. We're doing, again, standard 12-team. I thought I said it to be a 14-round draft, but I actually set it to 13, but that's all right. That's what standard is. And, and of course, I'm always eliminating the two-center rule because that is stupid. But here we are. You're sitting at number two. All right, we know... We think we know. We're 99% sure that Jokic will go at one, as he does in literally every single draft, apart from the one I did yesterday. So what are you going to do at number two? Give us a bit of insight as we're three minutes away from the draft starting. I'm going to go with Steph Curry. Um, I think that Curry is closer to Jokic for the number one spot than he is to a pretty wide range of really good options that are available starting at number three. Um, Per game, he was, he, he has been excellent every year, including last year. Um, You know, there's injury concerns with everyone uh, the sort of stuff that was driving up his usage. Um, s- s- sorry, Yahoo's yelling oh, at me. I know it's bloody putting some random video up. I just have to close that as well. Hey guys, here's a, here's a video <laughs> before you draft guys. Be quiet. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, his usage should still be high with, um, clay probably not coming, coming back. I'm starting to hear reports maybe January. I was assuming March or later, but sounds like actually might be sooner. But even if he's he, back in January... He won't be back at full strength Yeah, until March. Yeah. Um, and so I just... I, I think that he's about as safe as they come. And 
perfect very happy to get him at the number two just a quick little spoiler ivan who's picking at number one he is claiming in the chat that he is taking towns at number one so i i was i, I was targeting towns at five this so that could that could be interesting i mean but it's not no it's not crazy as, it's not that crazy like you and i were just talking before the the this started that there are seven or eight people who i who would not surprise me if that at the end of the year they finish number one and Towns is absolutely in that mm -hmm. seven or eight. So you got um, Towns, Towns, Jokic, Curry, Harden, Durant, Davis. Who yeah. else? Who else could? That, that's six. Who else could we? I don't think Dame could get to number one. Um, I don't either. Uh, I think I think Giannis, Jason Tatum could finish five, but I don't think he can get to one. If if Giannis hits free throws, he's look. If he hits seventy five percent free throws, he's probably a chance for number one. Yeah, I would say. And his and he he hit seventy five percent in one of his early years. It's just yeah. sort of been trending down. Since. Yeah, thanks, Jason Kidd. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, if if he can get that back up, that's possible. Yep, absolutely. So there is like again, this is Jokic is going to go number one in every draft. He was number one last year, but literally nobody took him number one last season. He was yep. a guy that had been like number nine, number ten, and he was solid in that back end of the second round. And he, oh, so back into the first round, and he took this gigantic step forward, which we didn't really expect him to do to take this giant usage leap with uh, an assist leap and an efficiency leap all in one season, and that pushed him to number one. So to sit here, we have forty five seconds before we start. I'm just going to quickly to sit here and say he's definitely number one. You can't do any other thing. This is the, has to be the one like it's been for one year like it yep, it may be exactly. it may not it's it's fine and it's safe but it might not be and he wasn't number one for the last two months of last season so there's that part of it as well started out hot and did drop off we are 27 seconds away so let's flick that draft room over as we get ready for a 12 team mock draft bang 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 i don't know why i said that but here we go i think <laughs> i'm gonna stick with curry just because Curry is someone who might not go at number one, and maybe it'll be more useful to people following along at home. It, you know, because Curry, I have him as number two, but in some drafts you can get him as later five or six. And I think that'll be more interesting for the listeners if if Jokic indeed doesn't go number one. I would take Jokic above Curry in if I, we were playing this out. But, oh, there you uh, go. So, he took Jokic anyway. Yeah, so he was so, talking shit. That's all good. That's all right. So then you're going to take Curry. A cow's opinion. Yeah, so I'm going to take Curry anyways. Yep. There you go. All right, so now Trong and then uh, Ned Ryerson. Bing, he's picking at number four. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the same Ned Ryerson that posts on uh, Reddit as Ned Ryerson. And every time I see a post, I always jump in and, and drop a Bing on him because I just love that movie. Uh, do you know what movie I'm talking about? Or am I just talking shit here? You know what I'm saying? I recognize the name and I'm having, I'm like giggling at the name and having difficulty remembering the movie, but I'm absolutely like familiar with the reference. It's the bloke, uh, it's from Groundhog Day. It's the, the guy that, you know, always accosts Bill Oh yeah, Bill Murray. he's shaking his hand. Yeah, out on the street. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Yanni goes at number four. So that leaves me as expected, Carl Anthony Towns to pick at number five. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Towns, bang, we're, we're started. Now I'm taking Towns. People will suggest you take Lillard there or Durant. Durant, I'm just more worried about usage and, and perhaps games missed. Lillard, uh, I just look at Towns and go, the center position is more rare. Lillard's threes, yeah, that's the least rare category. I can get that a little bit later on. And I just want to get a center now. So I feel pretty, pretty good about getting him in that area. And as we said, I think Towns got a shot at number one. I don't think Lillard does. Yep. After yeah, that... I Oh, sorry. I, I think that I think that the the whole range of three to like nine is really about as even as you normally. There's more of a drop off in that range of draft, and this year I see that whole range is really really tight. I said I said like a, a top four, and then like a next four. So I said like the the way that the top four went here, and I, I could even put Towns into that top four to make it a top five, and then I think the next group. But that, there's there's not huge differences between them. Let's. Let's be honest, but let's recap what else has happened here in the draft. After um, I took Townsie at five, Lillard went at six, Luca went at seventh, Durant went at eight, Embiid at nine, Tatum at ten. Yep, yeah, that's that's pretty standard top ten. Yeah, you, know, you could throw Doncic and Durant and Embiid and Tatum in really any order there, and then Beal at eleventh. Uh, Again, pretty standard. I think some people will steer clear, like you, you'll steer clear of Beal in that area and probably jump a, a Paul George or. Anthony Davis ahead. And this is where it starts to get weird after probably pick 13, 14, where there's just gigantic question marks about uh, around a bunch of players. And we're not picking again, of course, until you're at 23 and I'm at 20. So a little bit of discussion for us there. But that, that's a pretty shitty spot. I don't like that spot in the second round, Alex. Um, I, don't, I don't love it, but I don't mind it. I, I'd rather be the top half 
I, 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 don't, I think that the, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 is all better than the end of the second round. The end of the second round is where it starts getting real shaky, yeah, in where, my opinion. Where you're picking, you 23. Know, yeah, like, like, you know, Paul George, Beal, if, you know, at Bam Adebayo, Sabonis, like, it feels maybe a little early for them, but they, but those are solid picks. I'm not bummed to come away with them. Anthony Davis at 14, it feels like a bargain. Yeah, um, what, what do you make of Trey Young going at 13? I, I'm not sure I'm into that. He was 23rd last year. Yeah, um, it feels a touch high, but he's going to be weird. so good at assists and he's probably going to be so good at points that I, I, you know, as a staple of your team and he's paired it with Tatum, who I think has, is going to be great. So I don't hate it. It's no, a touch high. Yeah. But it is, it, this is a weird area. Like I probably would have taken Davis at 13, but then, you know, Jimmy Butler's here has gone at 15 Davis at 14. But then after that, like it gets really weird. Like, you know, do you feel comfortable with Butler there? You, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't, but do you take Bam? What do you do with Fred, Fred Van Vliet? He, does he move into this area? Do you take that risk with Vooch and how he fits in Chicago? How does Sabonis get used by Carlisle? Hasn't been good so far. How does Adebayo get affected by Larry? There's a lot of question marks about a bunch yeah. of these guys in this area. How does yeah. Veen deal with DeRozan and Ball as well? Yeah. Heaps of guys that have question marks here. And uh, Gonzalo really, really thinking about that. Oh, no, sorry, he wasn't because Danny just picked. Danny picked Bam at 16. I'm a little bit worried about Bam. Like, Bam goes sometimes at 12 or 13. That's too high. I'm just a bit worried about how it all sits for him in terms of getting assists. Van Vliet at 17, I like that. Sabonis at 18, not sure. I like that. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, I think it's okay, but I'm, I am just I am a little worried about how it gets how he gets used by Carla. Now Martin, I think that's exactly where I have Sabonis. Yeah, I have him at exactly 18, so I'm okay with that. Now I'm gonna be. Whew, what do I do with my pick? Is Levine staring at me here? But. Is that the direction that I want to go? I reckon it might be. I think I think Levine, if Martin doesn't pick him, Zachy might be my guy here. Just I, I like getting some bulk scoring in. Well, he takes Maga Porter Jr. at number nineteen, Fun. which I know you're a you're a fan of. Um, oh, okay, so is it Levine for me? Probably it probably is. Now Levine was sixteenth last season. I'm gonna pick twenty or so here, or twenty exactly twenty. Um, yeah, let's just let's just take Zach. All right, let's take Zach there. So I'm I'm not super confident about it, but that's sort of the what happens in this area of the draft. There's a yeah. lot of a lot of question marks like Lamelo Ball, Don Mitchell. Do I take those guys? Lonzo Ball's been dominating. I don't think we take him this high, but he's got some real value as well. Um, what are you? Yeah, so I, who are you I, targeting? Levine Levine worries me because of the um, you know you're talking about Levine and I'm like oh isn't that a little early for him you know I'm worried about what's happening with his usage and then I checked yeah. my ranks and he's exactly at 19 and you got him at 20 um which I sp- think speaks to what we're saying about it. talent dries up quick here it, it's, um, a, it's a weird spot yeah um so if, uh, so Don, Don Mitchell 21 and Mitchell 22 yeah so Mitchell was like your, your pick now so Mitchell was like you know, 36th or something last season but just the, the weirdness around this area means like if you take him at 22 like it, you go Jesus that's high we're expecting this big jump forward but I don't know what else to do in this area it, it is totally fine like you know Shea Gutis Alexander you'd take there but you do worry about him missing more games than other players because they'll be extra cautious they're not going to sit him for three months at a time like that's just that wasn't a fake injury that he had but they will be more cautious with him so that that is a risk <clears throat> So what do you do there? Do you expect Lamelo to take a step forward? I do, but is this enough? Is Rudy Gobert the guy you want? Yeah, maybe he is, but especially if you've got. I think I'm going to go with Gobert. Yeah, I think Gobert is is absolutely worth it, and especially if I if I was the Giannis guy who picked him at four, who ended up with Vooch at 21, I would have taken. Um, that was Ned Rice, and um, I would have taken Gobert probably in that spot. So Gobert goes at 23 to you, Julius Randle at 24, and again another one of those guys that last year you go yeah fine, this is where he is, but we worry a little bit about assist opportunities and usage dropping off with those other players at it. LaMelo goes at 25, so you're back on, Alex. Talk us through what's happening. So the question I think that I'm have, dealing with right now is I do really like Aiton. Do I sort of lean into a punt assists with Gobert and Aiton, or do I go to someone who I'm a little bit higher on than most with Devin Booker? So I think I'm going to go with a son either way. Um hmm. And I've done a bunch of Curry and Booker drafts. So let's see what happens when I go Curry. 
uh, and then pair him with Gobert and Aiton. Hmm. Um, it's a little early for some, and I know that you're not as high on Aiton as I am. No, I was actually considering but... picking him at 29 just to just to get oh, nice. some center stats in. It is a big step from where he was last year, but just yeah. getting some reliable center numbers in there. He was an option for me, and I don't. Yeah, now, I'd, I'd, Zion's an option for me coming up, but I don't know if I want his free throws. Can I deal with his free throws on my team? Maybe, but probably not. My free throws aren't particularly strong, and he can just wipe them out straight away. Yeah. Um, Shea goes at 27. He was another option for me. Um, is it Booker? Maybe it is Booker that I take it again. But he, he wasn't anywhere. He was 47th last season. And I'm taking him at 30, but... Well, you know, that's sort of where I've got him projected anyway because yeah. I am expecting some improvements. It is it's just a weird area. Do I take LeBron? That's who I'm... That's... that's well, the decision was made. But okay. yeah, LeBron versus Booker, if I were in your shoes, would have been the two that I was looking at. Do I just go safe and take Brandon Ingram? Like, that's another option for me. Like, I think that that is... Hmm, maybe it is Ingram. I don't think I want Zion here. I'm just a bit worried about the foot. Booker... He wasn't this, this good last year. Scares me. I think Ingram is. I'll just take Ingram. Again, it's it's a little bit higher than where I have him projected, but I think the safety of that pick, um, the positional and uh, the fit of, of what how it works with my team makes some sense. I don't love it, but I, if he's thirty seventh and you get him at thirty or twenty nine, like who cares? Half a round, you don't you don't care. A full round, even you don't care a lot of these times. When you get to yeah. 15, 20 spots, that's the problem. So after Ingram at 29 goes Chris Paul at 30, and then Zion does go at 31. And it was getting to that stage of taking that flyer on him, and RKO Pappy takes him there, which I think is fine. He could blow through this number, or he could yeah, miss, it feels <laughs> miss a little, 20 games. It feels a little high to me, but I think part of it depends on, you know, and this is a mock, so it's hard, but it kind of depends a little bit on your league. Um, I'm going to take a bigger swing when I'm drafting in an expert league where, you know, you got you and Mesbris and whoever else, and we're going to, um, and I and I think that winning requires hitting a bunch of doubles and triples. I'm going to take some bigger swings, whereas when I'm drafting amongst my friends, my primary goal is not to get embarrassed. And if my goal is not to get embarrassed, then I'm not taking Zion Williamson in the third round because that could, it could hit, but it could really come back to bite you. Um, Jalen Brown goes at 32 Middleton at 33 Christian Wood at 34 in the expert 30 deep league that I'm drafting at the moment Christian Wood went at like 19 which was crazy oh, wow. it was crazy high to me I, didn't, I, I got Anthony Davis at 16 in that one and I was pretty bloody happy to get in there but uh, yeah some uh, some wild picks going in that 30 deep league Christian Wood in the top 20 was one of those for sure but he's at 34 here which I think is absolutely fine and it will both debating Devin Booker he's still sitting here at pick 35 are you yeah. surprised? I'm very surprised. So he just went oh, off the board. There he goes. Thirty-five. There. Thirty-five. I, I mean, that's ten round, ten, ten spots below where I would, where I have him in my ranks, in my in my sort of default ranks. And I mean, I I picked uh, Aiton, who I have below him on my ranks. So you know, ranks aren't everything. But no, ranks are bullshit. Like it's simple as that. Because yeah. <laughs> positional stuff is important too. And yeah. trying to judge, oh, this guy slide, or how's the replacement value of this spot, like. It, Ranks, uh, if you just... I'll say this all the time, Alex, as we get getting close back to my pick. If you have a list of ranks and you go into a draft and you draft off that list of ranks, I guarantee you lose. You might as well just set yourself to auto-draft and load that list in and then go and like have a beer or go for a run or have a snooze or you know pet your dog or something because you're not actually actively drafting. It doesn't work that way. Um, All right, other picks. Devin Booker, 35. Drew Holiday, 36. Rashawn Holmes at 37. People have come to me worried. Hey, Josh. Is Sacramento going to you know, start Tristan Thompson over Sean Holmes? Are they going to split minutes? Are you worried about that? I am not, but Sacramento is stupid, so dumb shit can happen. <laughs> are, are you worried about that? I am not worried about that, but as you said, I there is a Sacramento Kings tax in my mm-hmm. when I am prepping and when I am drafting, and yep. every single member of the Kings drops down a few spots because they are on the Kings, and I don't trust that organization. So after Holmes went Edwards. Goose goes at 38. Fantastic Darren... draw, deal. I, th- I think that's a great spot for him. I, I think that's a great... I would have... I'm, I'm really excited about Edwards this year. I would have looked at him at 44 for sure. Uh, Fox at 39. Capella at 40. Jaron Jackson at 41. And Westbrook at 42. Um, phew, Westbrook looked pretty shit house in the preseason. I know it's preseason, but man, he, he needs to 
uh, rein in some of those tendencies that cause some issues for him in order to fit on this team. I think I think he'll figure it out, but it might be rough early on. Is what I would say. Yeah, I over the summer I got a little ex- more excited about him than I've been in years because I, of what they'll at, the way that the Lakers would theoretically ask him to carry more of the regular season load, but it hasn't been great so far. And you're up. It's you're yeah. Up so now. Toby Harris went at forty three. I was going to consider Harris in that spot in my spot. Now I'm looking at the top of my board. Yusuf Nurkic is there. Look, people know this is more just to illustrate that I value Nurkic at this area and I think that he can actually be higher than this. But in a lot of cases, we can just let him slide down from there. But he needs to be playing 26, 27 minutes. He was 50th last year in the last two months in 25 minutes a night. So I'm pretty confident he plays more than that. And let's just take him and see how this uh, pans out. But in in most cases, you can probably let him go through to round five. but you know, me getting myself a couple of quality centers there means that there are less quality centers for other people to get. And we're getting to that stage where we, we hit the Isaiah Stewart cutoff point where there's not many good ones after that. Yeah. So we're coming up on me. And interestingly, there's a bunch of good centers, but I already have two of those. Yeah. Um, Miles Turner, I, you know, I think in the late 40s, that's a great pick. Robert Williams, John Collins, I think all three of those are great picks at this value, but I already have Gobert and Aiton, so I can't really afford to do either Mm. of them. I like Porzingis there. Uh, John Morant goes at 45, Porzingis at 46. I think Lonzo Ball needs to start going here. Would would you consider Lonzo? Um, I... In a vacuum, maybe, but I want a little bit more points after Gobert and Aiton are probably not going to do too much of that for me. Um, and so I think I'm actually looking at someone who you and I talked about last week. Um, I think I'm looking at, I kind of want McCollum, but I also wonder if I can wait a little bit. I, I'm going to. Yeah. I reckon you probably could. I reckon you could get him next. I reckon you could get him in at round five, but, next, but you don't know. Yeah. I'm going to try, I'm going to see if I can get McCollum with my next pick and I'm going to get OG and Anubi. Oh, bastard. Uh, That's who I wanted to get back to me at 53. <laughs> I am very excited about, I was excited about him before the last couple of days. He's looked great this preseason. Yeah, yes. uh, the Raptors need him to take a step and maybe he's able. And this is sort of a pick where even, I don't, I don't think there's any issue with the fit on this team so far. But even if there was, I think there's enough upside that I would at least consider it. Mm, okay. I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do here. So I, I could go big again with my next pick and really just load into these big picks and then get some threes later on. Hmm. Jonas Valanciunas is an option for me. I know that you've still got a pick here, so I'm just spoiling what I'm thinking, but that's fine because this draft doesn't mean anything in the scheme of things. Yeah. So Jonas might work for me. Ivan really winding the clock and you've, you've killed him by taking OG. He's in shambles, Ivan. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Ivan, wake up. Oh, yeah, no. Auto draft. Oh, no. Oh, no. He didn't get Kyrie, so he had a cue. So he, he took Miles Turner at 48. Okay. I love Miles Turner. I think he's really good. I just, I, yeah. the blocks is, it's all, it's all one category really, isn't it? it may, yeah. Maybe Carlo turns him into Porzingis. Maybe. And maybe skin. he gets traded. I, I mean, that's actually a thing that, it again, you know, depends on what kind of, what your risk appetite is. Yeah. Um, he's someone who there's a decent chance he gets traded. And in I feel some like I've been saying that for three years, though. And so, yeah, true. But uh, in some situations, a trade would boost him. And in other situations, a trade would hurt him. And we don't know. So he's, he, whoever's, the, Ivan's there because he took John Collins yeah. with 30 seconds left. Yep, so he's got um, Miles Turner and John Collins at 48, 49. So it is where we talk about the bigs are just flying now. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you've got your Valentina Stewart, Rob Williams, um, all these guys. You're Siakam, if you wanted to take that injury risk, or not injury risk, the fact that he's missing the start of the season, like he's there. And then you run into a bunch of guards after that. Yeah, it, I'm physically pained passing on Robert Williams. I love Robert Williams. And, you know, him in the 50s feels like great value, but I just don't need another center. So I'm going to take CJ McCollum. I think him in the fifties is also great value. Um, you know, we talked about him a couple of days ago. I'm very excited about his upside. He came out of the seat. He, he came out of the gate like gangbusters before he hurt him, his leg last season, even if he's not quite that good at pick 50, 
it's great value. I talked about this on my show that I did earlier today, a sleeper show. This is me preferencing that I'm drafting Jonas Valanciunas, who... Um, Jonas Vasu Inu do you, know <laughs> do you know where ESPN has him ranked? Silly low. Really, really silly low. Yeah, 115th. So yeah, he's he's not going to last to 115 in this draft. Uh, Yahoo's got him at 57, which is uh, look he was 30th last year. He's not going to be that good. I, I think we understand that in New Orleans, right. but I'll take him. At, I'll take him at 53. If Ned doesn't bing me here and uh, and uh, take him off me, I'm going to get my annoyed sound effect ready just in case. <laughs> Ah, that's all right. He took Dejounte Murray, Dejounte. which is a pretty good pick as well. Murray's looked pretty solid. Yeah. Of course, we know what Murray does and doesn't do um, in mm-hmm. terms of you know the lack of uh, assists from a point guard. The weird thing about Dejounte Murray, as I just sit on, I'll just draft Valentin and we can talk. The weird thing about Dejounte Murray, so we go, he's an elite defender. He's super long. I think he blocked five shots last year, which <laughs> is like I think Evan Fournier blocked more shots. That's a comically low number for a bloke with that defensive profile. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I don't understand why he didn't block. Because you look at him and go, oh, yeah, look at this. Like, he's the he's a shot-blocking guard. He's his defensive master. And he just gets none of them. And it's so weird. When Fred yeah. Van Vliet's blocking 0.9 shots a game and he's six foot one with, like, no arms um, and DeJounte can't touch one, it's weird. Anyway, uh, Rob Williams goes at 54. And then uh, old Alf Stewart goes at uh, number 55. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Lonzo Ball at 56. I love that. I love Lonzo Ball there. I think there's yeah. real top 40, top 30 even upside for him this season. He's blocking a shit ton of shots. He blocked three or four shots the other day. I really like Lonzo. I hope that he holds... I, I think that he... I hope that he hold, catches on. Um, I, I am worried about how do the Bulls distribute the ball once... Yeah everyone's there and everyone is and, and you've got all these players <laughs> trying to share the ball um i i if i had to guess i'd guess uh lonzo gets a boost in assists but i am wor- a little worried that his points tail off because he strikes me as that kind of player yeah he might who, average 13 points who, who will take that sort of all right i'm gonna distribute and do my best to keep all of these guys happy kind of role um but <sighs> but overall his defense is rebounding uh, I, I think that this is a solid spot. Let, let's you know, talk about the run on centers. And this is how crazy it gets. Jakob Pertl just went at 59. Now, I like Jakob yeah. Pertl. I think he's one of the best defensive centers in the NBA. But that's fucking crazy. Like, at 59. Like, I know you need to center. But this is what we talk about, about that run on getting centers. And if you miss out, you are in trouble. And then by you and me hoarding those centers as, as sort of perpetuated that. But that's part of what you do then you put that pressure on others then they have to come and make picks like that that means the other guards then will fall back to you and you can get some more value in those later rounds so understanding the trends and how things go can have that benefit like I might not have needed to get Towns, Nurkic and Valanciunas but getting them forced that sort of a move which then enables things to happen for us later now as we wait for my next pick we're eight picks away question for you Alex what player are you most concerned about after what we've seen in preseason, like who do you go? Oh, I'm not sure what's happening here. I mean, I guess my answer is going to be who someone we already talked about, which is Westbrook, and that's just because I, I try really hard not to put much emphasis on the preseason. Mm-hmm. I try really, I make a point of like, you know, during the regular season, we're on the box scores every night, and like yeah. in the middle, I, I make a point of not doing that. And I try to sort of take a step back and like let a couple of games accumulate before I look at all of it together. I, you know, if I don't have a draft that day, I'm probably not looking at the box scores the night before and waiting until like, if I can, you know, wait two days to try to look at it all together because there's just so much noise. And Westbrook's one of the ones where fitting into a new place around high usage guys, maybe there's some there there. And he's also a little bit older. I really try hard not to look, not to pay too much attention to the preseason. I feel like that da- that way danger lies. Yeah, fair enough. Like there, there is absolutely that part of it. If, if I had to say that I'm worried about guys, it's you know, like someone like Derek White who hasn't shot well at all after not shooting well last season. I, I do think it will come in a little bit and I would hope that it would push his draft swap back a bit. But I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned with Rob Williams looking a little bit sort of uninvolved offensively. But yeah, defensively, I think he's still fine. Um 
I, the I will say that I am someone who the preseason has affected me on in the other direction is uh, Kevin Porter Jr. Oh, uh, um, really? I, I am reacting, boosting him. I, I am excited about what I'm seeing from him. Well, he That's, dropped an absolute two in his a, last game, though. Huh? His last game was shit house. He, he had a good game prior to that. And then his first game was great. And his second game was, was bad. So I don't, and I don't know where he's sitting at the because they're currently playing at the moment. So what what turns you on to Kevin Porter from the preseason? What did you look at and go, yeah, let's go? Um, th- that that first game, whatever those cr- those crazy well, stats were. Let me tell you um, what he's doing at the moment. He's zero of five yeah, but, for three points in twelve minutes. Ooh, tonight. Yes, uh, with uh, one assist and one steal and two boards in twelve minutes. So yeah, it's, uh, well, so maybe maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting I got too excited too early. Um, uh, it's not going well. It's going better than it is for Jalen Green, who's on zero points in twelve minutes with four turnovers. So it's not going well for Houston, just as a general rule. There. <laughs> now let's just recap the rest of these picks here. After Pearl yeah. at fifty nine was Haywood sixty, Derek White sixty one, Colin Sexton sixty two, DeRozan sixty three. I like that one. Brogdon sixty four. That's good. Garland, 65, I like as well. And we're two picks away from me. And I actually don't know what I'm going to do here. The Pascal Siakam pick is looming. I don't know if I want to take that, but it is interesting around this area of the draft. Um, I, probably... I like getting Garland after Sexton. Sorry, just to jump yeah, in. Yeah, no. I like getting Garland after Sexton. I, I would flip them. Uh, so would I. Yeah, I would too. Let's see. What, what, what do I want to get here? I could throw a... I was expecting to be bad in assists, but I'm actually not terrible. I think I can recover a little bit there. My steals are atrocious. So someone who doesn't... Who does get assists might be... Right? Do I get D'Angelo Russell? With Towns? Maybe. I don't really care about the fact that they play on the same team. No, it doesn't matter. Um. Whew, yeah, he's... Or Kyle Lowry. Huh. This is definitely a guard zone. Ben Simmons just went at 66. What do you make of the report that Simo might be back? I mean, I get like if he's back, then getting him at 66 is kind of a deal, um, and it means that he maybe needs new agent. Um, oh, they, 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 there's something so weird about it that the fact that they expected to not have payments withheld. Like they yeah. just thought, well, we're just going to hold out and we're still going to get paid. And then the NBA and the law said, nah. <laughs> and they went, oh, oh ma- ma- maybe, maybe, maybe we can come back. Like that is bad, bad advice from whether that's coming from the agent or whether it's Simmons. I, I don't know what it's got to be the agent telling him that, but that's pretty poor if that is in yeah. fact the case. Um, but it seems a little, uh, it seems a little weird that he would expect. To, and that no lawyer could say no, you can't just say I'm not turning up and expect to get paid. He could he but, should have just done what Harden did last year. Turn up, be like a miserable prick, and just be like, Get me out of here, this is bullshit, get me out, no, I'm not trying, and then get rid of him that way, rather than not turn up. Mm-hmm. And then have, you know, Embiid throw shade at him every single day and now try and fit back <laughs> into the locker room. Oh, it's it's gonna be weird. Yeah. What do you think about the last pick that just went? <sighs> I think your man Ned Ryerson. Oh, uh, he he binged Kyrie Irving at sixty nine. Um, I am not interested in drafting Kyrie at all. Um, now, I believe that Kyrie will have the out designation on Yahoo, which means he is IL plus eligible, which means that you can shuttle him in and out of your lineup. And, uh, and stream guys in, but you have to have enough weekly acquisitions to deal with that. And the, pro- the problem is, is that in the first nine weeks of the year, four of those weeks, the Nets play all games at home. So he's out for four, four whole weeks at the start of the year. I, I, I wouldn't do it. I don't think he's getting vaccinated. I wouldn't be drafting Kyrie yeah. in the top 100, M- maybe at 120. And then you can you bring him in and out and then, hey, look, I've got him for these weeks and I don't have him for these other weeks, but I'm, I'm not taking him there. There's my long answer to a short question. Yeah, I, especially given that he's likely to get injured in addition to all the oh, missed, yeah. game, missed games from then, oh, makes it even worse. I've got 20 seconds on the clock. Oh, shit, it's your pick. I, yeah. Problem is the guys I want, I'm not sure make the most sense for my team. But I really like Lowry. It feels yeah. like a steal getting no, in is. this late. Just feels like too much value to pass up. Maybe I'll, tra- you know, worst case, I trade him in this hypothetical mock. 
that's not getting played out. Marcus Smart and Kevin Porter Jr. Who we were just talking about went between me, and mm. now it's back to me. And both of the names that Yahoo has on the top of the queue, I really like um, Pascal Siakam and Bogdan Bogdanovich. I'm a little afraid of drafting someone who's hurt with a questionable injury. Um, so Siakam, if Siakam were healthy, this would be like bargain of the century uh, territory. Yeah. But... He would have gone 30 spots earlier. Yeah. Um, and Bogdan Bogdanovich, I guess I could use a small forward, power forward type player. I'm going to tell you, I've absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with my pick. And I think I just might take Siakam if he's there. Just at pick 77, if he's there, I might have to do it. I, I don't know. This is a, there's a weird area here where I'm looking at, yeah. do I take Kemba? Is it Mike Conley? Like, what the hell? Do I, Norman Powell, I don't feel good about. Karis LeVert's injured. Like, Jesus Christ, there's just a bunch of weird picks here. Uh, so you yeah. take Bogdanovich there at 74. Has he played in the preseason? Yeah, he did uh, limited minutes um, in their first game. Um, okay. Played decent, and then he rested the other game. game. So let's see what Trong does here, and then Ned Rice and say, ah. Oh. Chuck your Siakam. Trong. My guy. <laughs> All right, so let's reassess what we're going to do here at 77. Hmm. Now, do I have many injured blokes? I guess I do with Nurkic and Russell who have not stayed healthy the last few years. So I was going to no. consider looking at Kemba Walker, but I don't feel particularly strongly about that. What I can do here... I don't feel particularly good about Norman Powell either. Hmm. All right, let's... Ooh, Jeremy Grant goes at 76. That's my pick. All right, so tell me... Oh, fuck. Um, I don't want to do this. Jalen Green is an option, but I don't want to do that. I, I'm going to take Miles Bridges. I don't love that, though. I'm going to do it, but I don't like it. I don't like I that. Mean, that whole area it's a terrible weird. range of traps. <sighs> it's bad, man. It's I, so weird. I tweeted the other day that every time I try to, re I try to adjust my ranks for between like 70 and 90, I just... I'm stuck with none of these people feel like they deserve 71. Um, it's a tough range of yeah, so you got like here. Yeah, I've got Powell, Levert, Kemba, Conley, all those guys possibly probably higher than Bridges, but I don't feel confident about any of no. them. Yeah. Um, Levert, are you at all worried about health with Levert? Yeah, Mass, look, he's got a fra fractured yeah. back. Like, I can't feel confident about that. <laughs> if I can get him at 100, yeah. But especially, you know, paired with historical poor shooting numbers. And now a fractured back and a history of broken feet and ankle problems. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just like, no. Like if he had to come in healthy, like he would have, I would have taken him there, no problem. Um, yeah. After Bridges goes Covington, Heald, and then Cade. I've probably never seen Cade go this late at pick number 80. I guess because he just hasn't played in preseason. People are just like, mm, yeah, we haven't seen anything to make us get excited. But I think at eight, like I know you hate rookies, but would you even consider him there at 80? In a normal year, no. This year, yes. This year, I think this range of the draft is so weak that if Cade fell to 80, I would at least consider it. Um, especially since, you know, some of my other targets just went off the board. Here. Yeah. Like, you know, Buddy Heald is someone who I would look at at this range of the draft, but he went the pick before. You're not worried um, about Heald coming off the bench? Everyone in Sacramento gets <laughs> bumped yeah, down. That's true. I don't. I just I don't know what to think for the with Sacramento. It's a mess in that in that city. Yes, it is. <laughs> I hope they can get to the plane. I think Sacramento fans need that, but it also rewards weird front office decision making. But we'll see what they end up doing. Did you see the report the other day that they're considering giving Alex Len minutes? Yeah, ne next to Rashawn Holmes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Just so well, bad. He's better than what they had at backup center last year, which was Hassan Whiteside. Um, Tristan Thompson That's also there. Like, I, I don't know what they're doing with that team. I don't, where's Bagley fitting in? Everything is so weird there. Daniel Gafford at 83. There's the center tax coming on. That's that let's get it who reached for Pirtle as well. So he is desperate for centers. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. the same guy, isn't it? Gafford, Gafford is someone who like, I, I like so, sort of seems like a good pick, but at the same time, not in the 80s. Not there. No, no. I, I like Gafford too, but you know, who, I don't know what's going to happen yeah, to him. Yeah, it's the same guy who took Poto. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen when those other guys come back. I could, that's a weird spot. Um, 
your boy Al Horford is sitting there at the top of the Yahoo queue. How excited are yeah. you to get him at 95 if he falls down to you? you try, you not, try not to get my hopes too excited. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got my eye on him. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping. Um, and I, I, was checking, I was checking my stats, making sure that he'll, uh, he'll fit. And I do think that he would be a solid fit with what I got. Yeah, I would love it. I would be very excited if he lasts. Interesting that Jalen Green is still available as well. Damn, Nerland's Noel at 84. Man, centers are flying off here. Nerland, I, I like Nerland's Noel, but hmm. let's see Again, who reaches for Brook Lopez. Brook Lopez shouldn't be a top 100 pick, but someone's going to reach yeah. up for him, it feels like. He should not. I'm finally off the Brook Lopez chain. It took, it took a long time. Uh, we had a good run together. But I'm oh. finally off of the drafting Brook Lopez every year train. He was great for a long period. And he's still really solid if you get him yeah. in the right spot. But you know, yeah. pick 90 is not the right spot, I don't think. I don't see him improving yeah. from last season, let's put it that way. No, I, I, I don't either. I'm getting into in, the in, Kemper territory here. I'm going to put Al Horford in my queue. I'm going to throw Conley in my queue. Evan Mobley in my queue. Evan Mobley's look good in preseason. I've been pretty happy with how he's looked. Yeah, that the, that's been promising. That I, I mean, be, because he's not really going in the top one hundred, but I still had been looking at other rookies before him. When you get to around that hundred, mm. where I start looking at a lot of rookies, and he has sort of uh, earned his way into consideration there. Um, and there, who had the article? Someone had the article yesterday. I want to say it was maybe someone in the athletic um, uh, predicting that Jalen Suggs was going to have a really good season, which I'm a little worried about Orlando, everything and how they distribute Ugh, minutes. Mobley's and... gone. Fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. Suggs but... doesn't look good either. He's struggled so far and that doesn't you know, portend anything because you know, Trey, Trey Young's first for five actual NBA games were dreadful. And then yeah. Yeah, he turned it on. So I'm not Donovan worried. Mitchell. Do you remember his first couple games? Oh yeah, that was bad. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Suggs might be in that same mode. So I'm not worried about that. But actually, on my on my board here, I've got three rookies in a row now. Obviously, Mobley's gone, but I've got Suggs and Giddy right next to each other. Not quite at the top, but close enough that I've got to start considering them. But I'm not going to take them. Or oh, and then Jalen Green still Giddy that high. I like Giddy. I just that's even higher than I like would have expected. If he has ten, six, and six. All right, getting those yeah. six and six is valuable enough with you know, oh, yeah. a steal and maybe a three a game. And then anything else on that, on top of that, is, is a bonus to me. Um, so after Mobley goes Wiggins and then Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Then we're two picks away from my pick. And I don't really I don't really know what I'm doing here. On the topic of Giddy, you know, we, I say there's a Sacramento Kings tax. Um, there's a Thunder boost. Um, mm. You know, a young player on the Thunder... Um, I'm I'm willing to jump them above of whatever I would be projecting for them, just because they'll lean into the youth and they've got a good management team around it that I trust them to give minutes to the best players. So yeah, uh, he's going to get thirty plus surely. Uh, after Alexander Walker goes Ivan Fournier and then Jalen Green at ninety one, so that takes that decision out of my hands. Now, do I piss you off and take Al Horford, <laughs> or or he's an option for me, or I think I'm going to take. Um, Kelly Olynyk. All right, let's take Kelly Olynyk. Oh, well, that was kind of you. I have no interest in Kelly Olynyk. Uh, maybe that's just Spurn Celtics fan, but <laughs> I'm I don't want anything to do with him. And I might take Giddy if he comes back around to me at one hundred and one. Um people just breaking or what's your opinion on this actually i think it's breaking draft etiquette people just dropping um undrafted players names in the chat here i hate when people do that can't do it can't do it people are doing absolutely it not oh, yeah. i'm gonna type in there stop saying undrafted players names for fuck's sake <laughs> yeah um you can't say it I, I mean and there are a couple of times when there's a. Uh, a, like you really want to comment on someone like the Sexton Garland thing. You know, yeah. I, if I see someone take Sexton above Garland, I want to say um, wrong Cav, but like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, exactly. You can wait till both of them pick. Now, Keldon Johnson just went and that right. is wildly early to me at 93 from you. Uh, oh, Horford, you got wrecked. Al Horford no. goes at 95. 
<laughs> so sad. That's uh, I'll, I'll I'll do this one just for you anyway. Oh fuck off! Oh, man. Fuck off! There you go. That's for you. <laughs> oh no, I hadn't even. Oh man. Com completely like un unrelated. Like you make your pick, but obviously that that drop there is from Succession, and I was watching the cast of Succession on the Late Show the other night. I did not know that Logan Roy, the actor Brian Cox, is British. All right, I did not know. And I heard him talking, I go, wow, this guy is British. And then Shiv starts speaking, and she's Australian. I go, what is going on here? And then Tom Womgan starts speaking, and he's British as well. And I just went, fuck this. I don't know what's going on on this show anymore. Why are all these people speaking in different accents? And I had no idea. That is nothing to do with fantasy. But especially when that chick started talking with an Australian accent, I went, hang on, what is, what's actually going on here? I had no idea. Anyway, that's my succession rant. Anyway, Kemba Walker at 95. I like that for you at 95. I like it. He might, look, there's a chance Kemba's just done. I don't think that's true, but there yeah. is a chance. But I like it. The, 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 chan the, the upside there is, is pretty good. Boyan I mean, goes we're, Yeah, we're talking about the 90s. Like we're, yeah. we're talking about a player who, per game, is still was, I think, top 50, top 40. Or not top 40, but No, he was top 40. Top 50, he was top 40 in the last two months of last season. After yeah. Yeah, he got his knee healthy. So... Yeah, unless he's dropped off over the offseason, which is possible. Um, okay. It's pretty good value. The worry you have there, of course, is injury. And then if Rosen quickly actually just push him for more minutes, which is, again, that's a possibility too. Um, I Bar like Barrett at 97. Do you? I don't. I like what do you like about him there? Just the upside, just the potential for, for him to continue developing. And I think we're late enough that you take some shots. Um, you're, you got a player who's got some institutional investment, a coach who will give infinite minutes to players if they are, you know, in the starting lineup. Um, that's true. And, and so just, it's, I, it's I your think we late enough that, that sh that's worth a shot. You better make your um, pick. You got you, 20 seconds. Yeah. All right, fine. Um, I've got two other guys while you're, while you're doing that, that I am a bit worried about their preseason. Kyle Anderson and Devontae Graham, who are at the top of this Yahoo queue now. I'm a bit worried about where they sit. DeAndre Hunter's ranked outside the top 200 on ESPN, just in case anyone hasn't seen my sleeper video today. Um, I'm a bit worried about him as well. I just don't know the, the knee plus the other players around. He was great at the start of last season. I don't know what's real with him, though. Yeah, I, I mean, the Hawks ha ha are really deep at wing, which is a little worrisome. I, I got him... Almost, I I don't usually recommend this in basketball, but I got him almost as like a weird handcuff to having um, Bogdan already. Um, if one of those players does bad, it probably is bodes well for the other. Um, and when Hunter was good last year, I just I really liked it. That's and, true. And you know we're in the take swings part of the draft. Uh, I needed a forward. He struck me as a forward to take a swing on. Okay, so Jalen Suggs goes at 99. I am looking at maybe getting giddy. Wendell Carter goes at 100. That's an interesting one because I'm also looking at taking Mo Bamba here. And I don't know which one to do. I don't know who is more likely to fall back around. I'd say probably neither will get back to me at 116. So what do I actually want to do here? I am going to... I'm going to take that... You talk about we're taking swings. I'm going to go with Mo Bamba. Yeah. He's a permanent, he's a permanent master. Like, I mean, and it's more to contrast he, that yeah, you know, Carter went at 100, so I'm taking Bumber at 101, <laughs> and we'll see how yeah. we go. Um, I think you actually have a shot at Giddy getting back to you. Do you reckon? Um, I don't think so. Not now. Nah, I don't think so. We'll see. I yeah. mean, in the early, in the early mocks, the ones that we were doing back in like you know oh, July and August, yes. way too early. He was going so late. He was the guy I mean, that I he's took. He's obviously like, risen a lot. But. Last round, he was always, you know, get him in the last round, get him in the last round. And he's still ranked 150th on Yahoo, but, you know, in competitive drafts, he's not going there. Barnes, he goes at 103. Uh, Mitchell Robinson at 102. Harrison Barnes at 103. John Isaac, 104. Zubats at 105. Jesus, we are really reaching for centers there with Zubats at 105. Zubats is fine. There's just no... Uh, I know I just took Mo Bamba, but Mo Bamba plays 26 minutes and he's a top 60 player. If Zubats plays 26 minutes, he's a top 130 player. So uh, there's the difference in upside there. Oh, man, Jordan Poole at 106. Holy shit. He's been awesome, and I actually don't hate him here, but that is nah. that is high. That is, I didn't expect to see him go ahead of Spencer Dinwiddie, for, to, for example. I also didn't expect to see Zubats go ahead of Mason Plumley. Um, yeah, I, I don't hate it is exactly the word choice I would use for Jordan Poole at 106. Mm. I'm not sure I would do it, but I don't hate it. 
Yeah, it is an interesting one. He's been awesome. And, you know, I've, much like Giddy, been talking him up all fantasy draft season as a late round guy. And now everyone's gone, oh, Jordan Poole's good. Um, let's draft him. And now it might, it's it's getting to that thing that happens nearly every year, Alex, where like, I think they've gone too high. Like, I'd, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to get him at 130. That's awesome. At 106, he could be better than that, but we're getting more to a 50 50 proposition whether he is better than that or not. Yeah. Um, so to break draft etiquette and talk about, but you know, we are oh, we've been doing the that the whole thing. as yeah. we go. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, looking, I'm filling my queue. I've got a while before it's my pick. And one person who um, I really kind of like a little bit, but is going undrafted in a lot of leagues. And I think I, I'm curious what you would have to say on him. Um, and I'm even passing on him because he's available on waivers after if I want him. Um, is Dylan Brooks? What? What are? Where are you on him? What do you think of him? How, how are you approaching Dylan Brooks? Right now? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not bothering with him to be honest. He's just so frustrating. If you're in a points league, sure, but his inability to understand how to take a good shot frustrates me. He doesn't contribute much out. Look, he gets some steals, but he's a low assist, low rebound, low field goal percentage guy who takes shots away from better players, and it frustrates the shit out of me to watch him out there. I don't hate it, though. If you want someone who might throw up 16, 17 points per game and you want to get it in the last round, by all means. If I was Memphis, I'd be playing Melton and Bain ahead of him pretty clearly, but mm-hmm. I'm not Memphis. I'm not Taylor Jenkins. So he's going to get good run. But I just... yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't love his overall fantasy game. Points leagues, sure. Love it. Whew, some interesting picks there, actually, off the board. Jesus, let's talk yeah. about it. Jesus. Okay. So Sadiq Bay goes at 107. TJ McConnell at 108. Now, TJ McConnell was like 60 or 70th last season. There's no way he repeats that in my mind. I, I wouldn't even bother with him. Agreed. Brooke Lopez at 109. Boucher at 110, which is fine as a fly. Larry Nance at 111. Yep. Yeah. Seth Curry at 112. No interest. Dinwiddie at 113. Good pick. Mason Plumley 114. Good pick. Um, any of those that stand out to you, good or bad, as I just work out what I'm going to do? Jada McDaniels goes at 115, so I'm just going to work out what I'm going to do. Oh, you're right, Josh. You mo- did get back to me. Yeah. Fuck, I mostly go. agree with your takes. McConnell, no way he repeats last year. Um, Boucher at this point in the draft worth the swing. I like Valeri Nance pick a little bit more than you. I, you know, he's got the potential. Seth Curry strikes me as should be in the same bucket as Dylan Brooks as someone who, if you're taking him at all, you're taking him with your last pick. Mm-hmm. I agree. This there's no need to take him there. Um, Dinwiddie, good pick. Jada McDaniels, 115, I like. Giddy, where you just took, I like. Tyler Hero at 117, I'm not sure I love. And I don't, I don't mind second, that. So I, should probably take I don't that. mind Hero there. I, I, he was in consideration for me, just getting some scoring late, especially while Oladipo is going to be out. Like That's going to give him a nice early season boost, and then it might drop off later on. But I could easily make the argument, Alex, that he's a better player than Oladipo at the moment. Like Oladipo has been pretty, yeah, pretty bad not. the last couple of years. All right, we're getting back to your pick. So who who have you got in the uh, queue here? Who are you targeting? Well, the top name in my queue at the moment is Jay Sean Tate. But I don't I don't I'm scouring the depths to see if anyone and anyone can inspire me. Ooh, I I found one that inspires me more. All right, and so, Jay Sean Tate went yeah. before me anyways. <laughs> Alright, so what are you what are you doing here? Andre Drummond? I think I'm gonna go Scotty Barnes. Ooh, I think okay. I'm gonna go Scotty Barnes. Um I, you know, I love rookies. I love rookies at this point in the draft, and I trust Toronto to develop players. And I think that there's a path for minutes, especially, especially early if on. Siakam hurt. Siakam and Boucher out early. That's gonna now he's gonna have some issues with percentages, especially free throws, oh, yeah. lack of threes, and a lack of scoring. That's gonna all be a problem for him. But the value will be higher early, and it will probably drop off, and you will get some assists. And maybe they find a way to keep him at 30 minutes. It will be hard because if they start say him, Siakam, and Ananobi, that shooting is pretty rough. Um, that would mean putting Gary Trent to the bench. So I, I don't think that they do that. So I think the Barnes is going to drop off. Um, but, you know, you're picking at 120 or whatever it was, 119. Yeah. It's, it, it's fine. Oh, and it's back to me. So the Anthony Melton and the Devontae Graham went between mm-hmm. my picks. It's back to me. Um what do I need? Anything? I've got plenty of point guards. Oh, let's boot. Let's take a swing on Poku. You know, swing big at this point in the draft. Um, 
that is swing I expect territory. to be drafting I expect to be dropping these picks soon and you know maybe he'll show something early that I like doesn't look like he's going to start um, they, everyone keeps asking, is he going to start? And they're like, oh, it's not about starting. And we like the roles coming <laughs> off the bench. All those words tend, no. tend to make me think no. <laughs> yeah. um, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have a role. It just means that they'll probably start you know, Baisley and Dort at the three and the four with Gideon Shea is how it's looking. Um, and then Poku comes off the bench. And he can still do plenty of damage coming off the bench. But you know, maybe that upside is marginally capped. I like Tim Hardaway there at 123. He doesn't do yeah. much apart from score, but that's fine. We're, I mean, we're in a range of the draft where my strategy changes dramatically based on how many rounds we're drafting. Yeah. So yeah. we're stopping at 13 rounds. I've only got a couple more picks. You know, whoever I'm picking here is likely to get cut for someone off of oh, waivers. I like Reggie Jackson. That's, oh, that's who I was just going to take. So yeah. Ned just wrecked me. Um, all right, so now I've got to reassess what I'm doing. But you're right, we're in sort of droppable territory here. Yeah, so I'll vamp while you, while you pick for a sec. But, you know, there are a bunch of players like Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson is probably going to have a better season than Poku, um, certainly at the start of the season. If I needed more production, if it was a deeper draft, I would have absolutely taken Reggie instead of Poku. But I want a little bit more upside, and I'm not afraid to drop these guys early. So I went for someone with um, what seems to me like a, a wider range of outcome and a higher upside. Everyone knows I'm not the biggest Montrez Harrell fan from a real-life perspective, but getting him at this spot, especially, at, again, with increased workload early in the season when Thomas Bryant's not there, um, yeah, that's uh, I'll take him there and I'll see what happens. If I need to drop him later on, I drop him later on. But you know, yeah, I'm okay with getting him there, especially there might be top 100 numbers for him for the first three months of the year. And then it might be 150th. And then if I need to move on, I move on. Um, it does impact my my team's overall free throw percentage quite a bit, but that's fine. I've got enough strengths in other areas there. Maxi that's, is the other one I was considering with Poku. The Ben Simmons news obviously dampens enthusiasm for Maxi. Yep. But Simmons could come in. He could play two games and get traded for a forward and Maxi is yep. back as a starter. So that could, yeah. And that's how you got to sort of be up and down with what you're, with what you're viewing these. Like when Simmons wasn't going to report, and it looked like he was no chance of reporting, then Maxi was a great pick, and now he is going to perhaps be there. And we don't know if a trade's happening. Then Maxi goes to a twenty-three minute night roll, and you might have to you know, take some losses in the first three weeks of the fantasy season while you wait for something to change. Um, so that, again, things just change quickly. Kyle Anderson at one twenty-eight, and Danny Green at one twenty-seven. They are just extraordinarily low upside picks. Yeah. Which, which is fine. If you've taken earlier flyers, like I you know, took a flyer on Josh Giddy, a bit, maybe that's a bit early, and taking those chances on, say, a bumper earlier on, and if I needed to take a Green or an Anderson or a Joe Ingles in this area, it's not that bad. But you know, if you've got no flyers, then I don't, I don't see the, the point of those guys in this area. So the guy who took Kyle Anderson also has Jonathan Isaac, Cade Hunting, Cunningham, yeah, okay. yep. um, and Spencer Dinwiddie, and Nikki Alexander Walker, He's got some injury risks. He's got some guys who we're not entirely sure of, the, of what they're going to do. Uh, get looking at it. I didn't like that pick as much until I looked at his team and looking yep. at his team. I'm like, all right, you know, this this kind of makes sense for me. So Will Barton goes. Well, actually, after Anderson at 128, it's his teammate Stephen Adams at 129. Will Barton at 130, and Duncan Robinson at 131. You know, just hitting the specialist there, rebound specialist, and field goals for Adams and three pointers for Robinson, pretty clearly. Um, my team has as little steals as any team could possibly have, I reckon. Just horrendous steal numbers. But that's fine. I don't actually need those numbers. My team is pretty... There's a specialist unbiased. out there. Yeah, I'm not going to be drafting. There are a couple of specialists out there for steals. Yeah, you but can But there are always away. specialists for steals. Always. Matisse Leibel not, not worrying about drafting him at this point. Right. Someone will. Dylan Brooks, there he is. Your mate goes at 132. Yep. Are you looking at Malachi Flynn at all? No, I'm he's probably not in a league this shallow. He's but been shit you... as well in the huh? preseason. He's been terrible in the preseason. But okay, as I will say, like people were super hyped on him. Like he's their fourth guard at this point. Yeah. Like Trent, Dragic, Van Vliet, and maybe they play Scotty Barnes at point guard some. And Sven Mihaljevic has been outplaying him in preseason as well. So no, I am not. Uh, I am not interested whatsoever in um, Malachi Flynn. I don't think I've drafted him anywhere, but I think I've put him on my waiver wire, on my um queue. 
Okay. Like, high rate of putting him on my queue and then not actually drafting. Yeah, not not interested. He's, he's looked so bad <laughs> in preseason too. I'm just not interested in that. Um, what do I need? What am I gonna get with these next pick? Oh, I know, I know who I want. I want Desmond Bain with my next pick. I'll throw him into the queue. As, Justin as I'm Holiday. Scrolling down, I saw him. I wondered if you'd take him. So there goes Holiday and Thibel at those last two picks. Again, Holiday is probably going to get a good opportunity with Warren and Levert out. Um, Thibel, eh, absolute specialist. Larry Markinen, sure, take a flyer on him. I'm not particularly high on him. Interesting to see Jordan Clarkson slide this far down. Most people, he normally goes higher than this. I think letting him slide this far is kind of smart. But I don't I don't hate picking him here. In fact, he's, he's in absolutely going to be an option for me to pick. Right, I mean, but we're in the 140s. Yeah. He, sometimes he's going as high as 100. Oh, yeah, I've seen him inside the top 100, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. So... Um, Especially in a 13-round draft, there is no pick you could make in the 11th and 12th round that I'm going to say, oh, my God, you idiot. Like, it's yeah. just, there is literally no pick. I might sort of raise an eyebrow, but oh, no, There point, are some that I'd go, I don't know what, what, what your idea is here. Like, if you take Royce O'Neal, I just go, like, what, <laughs> what's, the, what's the purpose of it? I know he's got a solid role, but there's just no upside with that. Like, you taking... T- like, Isaiah Roby, Aaron Gordon, Terrence Mann, they just all went absolutely fine. Right. I like the upside right. of all of those guys there. Um, and it might not work out, and it probably doesn't for yeah, fifty percent over the fifty percent of these guys in these areas, but I don't mind it. And you know, like Martin takes Eric Bledsoe, fine. Like it might work out, it might not. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna right. take Jordan Clarks in here. So I think that's some okay value. But there's nothing nothing wrong with it. But if you take like an absolute like fart of a player. Like, right, yeah. you know there is. A, yeah, it shouldn't have been so strong. There are limits, but like if you, if you uh, take Danilo Gallinari here, I'm just like, well, what's what's your upside uh, thought process there? Alperen Shingun, that's a real that's uh, upside flyer there for Shingun, and it might not do might t- not do anything for three or four weeks, but we like how that could look long term. That was what I was. That was who I was going to take if he made it to me. Um. Let's see. So we're getting up to your... So what are you thinking now? You've got two picks to yours. Like the top of the queue looks pretty rough. Like Patrick Williams just goes at 142. He's going to be ready to start the season, it looks like, but yeah. Like Derek Favors, Thad Young, Joe Ingles, like they are not particularly exciting picks. Although Favors could could actually work out for the start of the year. Who knows? Is Beasley like allowed to play? Is yeah. that guy not going to get suspended? No, he's not going to do the... KC, he's, he was suspended last year, so he's uh, that's that's done. No no ankle bracelet or anything for him at this point. He's ready to go. I just it looks like he will come off the bench as well. Yeah, um, I got a name that I'm gonna a swing that I'll take here, which is Dante Divincenzo. Um, the Bucks really, you know, they won the championship, but they really needed him last year. They did, um, and I mean. I just worry about when they win the championship, home. but they were also lucky to get past the. Um, mm. They were lucky to get past the Nets, and I can see him getting a lot of minutes and putting up some decent threes, some decent steals. Back, back to you, so draft. Portis and then Trey Murphy. That's another one of those just flyer picks that we're taking here at yep. the end of a draft, just to see what how how it happens. See what see what goes on there in New Orleans. Yeah. I think I might take Beasley here. Let me see what I got. I got Curry, McCollum, Lowry, Kemba. So I'm pretty good for like my core guards. I got OG, Bogdanovich, um, DeAndre Hunter, Scotty Barnes, Poku uh, as my forwards. Gobert, Ayton as really my only centers. I started started good with those and didn't do anything. Uh, I've, there any I've got a few centers. Taking? I've got Olenek, Towns, Nurkic, Valanciunas, Bumba, and Harrell. So if you want a center, you, you could probably theoretically tra- trade one with me. I've got a few of them. Oh, uh, this is another swing. Jared Vanderbilt. There's a chance he starts. Yeah, there is. There is. And he's a really good rebounder. Um, yeah. He's not going to do much more, but he's not going to score. You know, he might score six points a game, but he's a really, really good rebounder. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping. All right, my team's. That's my team. I'm hoping Desmond Bain gets back to me here with this next pick if it's not him I'm not really sure what else what other direction I'm going to go do I go with a Killian Hayes as, an, as a flyer pick there maybe 
do I take Lamarcus Aldridge? Although I, I just I don't need another center eligible player. No. Your turn. No, cool. There's Killian Hayes. So and went... Gary Trent. I like Gary Trent there. That's good value for him. I think. Nah, I don't like it at all. He played 31 minutes a game <laughs> last year. And he was 180th. Yeah, you know, and that's not even including turnovers, which he didn't get any of those. Um, which you know, boosts his because he just doesn't he just doesn't pass at all, and he's a bad shooter. And yeah, anyway, Desmond Bain is my last pick and we will see how that works. I think he is going to start for Memphis would be my guess. And as you said, if you can give me 15 points and two and a half threes, I'll be, I'll be pretty, pretty happy with that end result. Yeah, I mean, if you can get that with your last pick, that'd be great. Yeah. And it might not work out. But I've got like, you know, I, I, I did try to hoard some centers in this one just to, you know, because I know that it is a... Uh, a rare, rareish sort of number, rareish stat, rareish category. Um, yeah, you got a lot of centers, well. I do, and the, you know, <laughs> in the end, you end up trading some of those or moving on and and seeing how or which guys end up working out and which guys don't end up working out. And you got a good one thing. You know, if you're going to have a lot of any position, one thing that I like that you did is you've got some good floor guys, but also and some good ceiling guys. You know. Bamba could be great, but, you know, could be terrible. Um, Nurkic could be great, could get hurt. Uh, yeah. But you also have Towns and, J- and JV who provide really solid floors. Um, so I like the way you sort of mixed that up. Yeah, just trying to throw the yeah the, the, the mix of guys in there, I guess, to, to have that upside and, and downside. Look, let's just go through the last couple of picks here. We went after Derek Favors was Rubio, Tom Bryant, Dwight Howard, that's a rough one. Joe Ingles at 154. Um, and then we've got two picks left. And we'll see what these two guys are doing before we wrap up and go through our respective squads. Uh, Joe I'm Harris, Brian, I hope that 155. Guy gets healthy. He was fun when he was healthy. He was fun. He's all, I just also don't think that he is a particularly good player for a, for a good team. His defense is just so bad. Like He's a really good offensive center. He can be a really good shooter. But the defensive stuff is just so, so bad yeah. that I think as a team starts to get good, that he's a guy that starts to get marginalized. Much like but, yeah, Montrezl Harrell. I, 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 and with him not back until at least December and mm. the and the Wizards sort of strengthening up at big. I, yep. I, don't, I, think we've, I think his best days are in the past. Yeah, which is unfortunate, obviously. Um, last pick here, Joe Harrison is... Miami Bam Bam, just waiting for the, just really rolling the clock down here. <laughs> Is he going to do Andre Drummond? For Mr. Irrelevant. Come on, let's go take Andre Drummond. <laughs> just really just stretching it out here. <laughs> well, look at the, oh, there it is. And he takes Precious Utra, which I actually really like as a pick. Um, yeah. So, Especially well done. Especially as the last pick. Yeah. Uh, it looks like if he doesn't start, it's going to be like a pretty even minute split between him and um, Ken Birch, who did have a breakthrough COVID case. Birch is going to play in these next two preseason games, but uh, all the game that's actually on today, I think Birch is playing in that one, but Achua started and has 14 and four in 16 minutes. So that is, shout out to Sam Decker for playing an NBA game before he gets cut. Um, all right, so that that is the draft over. Let's bring us back in. Alex, do you want to just run through your team and um, you know, go through top to bottom and see how it looks? Sure. Um... So I went, do, how do you want me to do it? In order or by yeah, position? Go, go in order, it'll be good. All right, so I did um, Curry, then I did um, Gobert and Aiton, uh, followed that with OG and McCollum, followed that with Lowry and Bogdanovich, uh, followed that with, I think, um, Hunter, DeAndre Hunter and Scotty Barnes, then Poku and DiVincenzo and then Jared Vanderbilt to bring it home. All right. So my team, what did I do? Uh, where's my draft order? Anyway, that's fine. Um, just trying to see where I'm at. Oh, here we go. My team, I went with um, Towns, Zach Levine, Brandon Ingram, Yusuf Nurkic, Jonas Valanciunas, D'Angelo Russell, Miles Bridges, Kelly Olenek, Mo Bumba, Josh Giddy, Montrez Harold, Jordan Clarkson, and Desmond Bain is my team. And if I go and look at my projected standings on Basketball Monster, uh, let's get it actually ended up on top of that uh, projected standings. And then Sugar 
and then uh, Ramos Analytics and then my team all with the same projected winning percentage. And then Alex, you're not going to like where the projected standings put you. Um, Leangelo Ball season. I don't know which team that was, but then uh, he's next. And then it's Gonzalo, Trong, RKO, Danny, Miami Bam Bam, Ned Ryerson, and Alex's Wondrous team. But again, as you said, you're taking flies on guys, which doesn't come into projected standings. Yeah. And that's why yeah, we can look at this and it doesn't actually mean anything, this projected standings, because if these guys hit, then it works and you drop them and you bring other guys in. And, and that's the whole point of, t- of the draft is get, you, get your yeah. hands on a guy like a Pokashevsky. And if it hits, great. And if it doesn't, in a week, he's gone and he added the next waiver wire guy. And, you know, as a general rule, you turn over a third of your roster at least as the season goes on. So while it's nice to have that, you know, if you can build the strongest projected standings teams by having Danny Green and Joe Ingles and Royce O'Neill and Dorian Finney-Smith, but you've got absolutely no room for growth on those guys. And And, and and one reason I like swinging late is because it almost incentivizes me to be active on the waiver wires early. And there are going to be some huge, huge players who come off waivers. Always. Uh, Christian Wood a couple of years ago, Donovan Mitchell a couple of years ago. Um, these are mm-hmm. season-changing guys who were undrafted or, if drafted, quickly dropped. Absolutely. And by having these guys, I can try to react quicker. Uh, uh, that is absolutely how it works, and that is why you take those flies and those last couple of picks, and that's why yeah, I want to just make, get my hands on a bumper because if it works, he's top 60. If it works for Giddy, yep. he's top 70. If it doesn't work, oh, oh, well. I know I picked them at 100 and 110 or whatever it was. Oh, oh well. You know, again, you should be looking at the bottom, your three bench guys and maybe your two worst starters, your bottom four to five guys, as totally expendable and understand that if they hit, they can push right up and make you unbeatable. And if they don't hit, you will find guys off the wave or you can churn through to provide value of the 120th ranked player in a lot of cases. But if there's, yeah, there are different situations. Like I desperately need threes. Duncan Robinson is there. He's going to hit me three a game. That's fine. There might not be much upside, but that actually just helps. And then he sits there. And that, that's sort of what I did as well. Like Jordan Clarkson at 140, there's value in that. But if it doesn't work out, I'm still going to hold him because I think that you know, there is enough in what he does mm. with the points and threes that it makes sense to have him next. I can't find that in other spots. But I, w- I took my flyers early. And that's just different draft strategy. Yeah. Alex, I've kept you here far too long. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media. And uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, at my last name, R-I-K-L-E-E-N. Uh, yeah, follow me, ask me questions. Thanks for having me. Go and speak to Alex over there. And uh, yeah, Alex, thank you. So that will do it for today's show. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a show on busts, an updated bust show, and another mock draft. I'm debating whether it is a 10-team mock draft or a 16-team mock draft. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. We're still working that out. But follow me, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Thumb it up, leave a comment, subscribe, share. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.